Hello and welcome to another ACY Securities Daily Report video. My name is Alistair Schultz and I'm going to be a host through today's trading journey. Now in today's video, as opposed to doing the normal thing, I am giving you guys a bit of a rundown and a bit of an update all at the same time. And this is predominantly because some indicators that we were talking about in yesterday's video, being the Warren Buffett indicator, have now had another piece added to the list. Now, in addition to that, I'm also looking at what's going on with oil, but we'll get the oil story out of the way first, and then we'll have a look at the Buffett side of things. Now, oil has been a very, very fun market to actually be watching. It's a story that we can all sort of keep an eye on. It's easy to keep your eye on it as well because of what goes on in the market. It keeps us engaged actively quite regularly. Now, right now, for those of you who may not be aware, there is actually a cold front occurring in the US causing some supply disruptions when it comes to the ability to produce oil, which is pushing prices up, as you would imagine. Right now, we're seeing prices on WTI up around $60 a barrel, and we're also seeing Brent closer to $63 a barrel. So in both instances, we're seeing a decrease in the total available supply and a stronger demand for it, so the prices are beginning to rise. Now, whilst this might be something that's been going on and price has probably been baked in the last few sessions, it's a temporary problem. Weather obviously calms down. Unless we are in an apocalyptic winter, then the chances are this is going to ease and it's not going to be something that lasts forever. Now, realistically, I'm more interested about the long term and the immediate meeting coming up with OPEC on the 4th of March. Now, the first aspect of this to consider when we think about this from a fundamental perspective, we have the Biden administration being not exactly oil friendly. We also have the globe steering towards electric vehicles over and over again and with increasing pace. And then in addition to all of that, we've kind of got the idea of regulation on oil based financing being in a pretty tight place and likely to get tighter over the next 10 years with more regulation and more stringent controls being put in place on oil companies and their ability to borrow money to actually go and search for oil. Now, whilst all of those are occurring, yes, there is still an oil addiction. Now, we can't get rid of that overnight, but of course, at some stage, it eventually will. Now, the real problem that I face at the moment is really this relationship or the dynamics that are going on between OPEC, Saudi Arabia, Russia, and America more specifically. In their instances, last year, when we looked at what happened in March, we had the oil price crash, price moved to negative $37 a barrel, and it was really obviously led by what happened with the pandemic and lockdowns and everything of that variety. But there was also a second note, and that was that we did Russia didn't want to increase the price of oil. They wanted to keep it down, purely because at about $60 a barrel, it becomes profitable for the US to start producing which means that Russia loses a fair bit of market share in where they're exporting their oil to. And of course, they just don't like the idea of Russia making more money than them on a commodity that they can export. So in this instance, I think we're likely to see a little bit of a repeat scenario. I don't think the Magic 8 Ball says we're going to get negative oil pricing, but I am anticipating that particularly after a whole year of very long and deep cuts to oil production, across most OPEC members, they will be wanting to increase production numbers as well so they can get more money out of it even though it's at a cheaper price. I can see the Russia side of things not wanting the US to be able to produce either. So therefore, I think the chances of oil prices sticking around $60 a barrel are going to be pretty short-lived for the time being, at least in the immediate near term. But this is all going to really depend on what we see at the next OPEC meeting. Now, a reminder, that is the 4th of March, so we're only about two weeks away from that now. And naturally, we're gonna to have to keep an eye on what happens in that scenario. Either way, it's probably gonna end up with the same trains of thought from the Russian side, and likely the increases of supply, being that we've seen over the last year, most countries wanting to increase that supply as well. Now, looking at some of those indicators that we looked, talked about yesterday, we had the price to earnings ratio, we had the price to sales ratio, the price to book ratio. We also had the Warren Buffett indicator. Now we've added another one to the list and that is the JP Morgan cross asset complacency indicator. And now in this time, you know, all of those indicators have been considered what you would be maybe the old timey favorites of bubble predictions. Now, whilst they don't provide the clearest picture quality, if we were to look back at what happened during the dot-com bubble and it bursting, all of these figures or all of the numbers on these indicators were reading in the high range or what you would consider to be overbought. 
Now, in this instance right now, can we really count on these as being a useful determinator for where prices are going to move to next? Personally, with the amount of fiscal support and the monetary support that's come through in the form of stimulus or cash injections, I don't believe that's really a likely scenario because if we actually consider it, we've seen $7 trillion added to equity markets, $1.5 billion added to the cryptocurrency asset classes as well. And we've now, in addition to that, got high yield bonds getting run out at auction with very, very fast pick purchases. Now, even though some of those valuations are ludicrous, I do feel that the party is going to continue. The longer we see stimulus kicking around, the more likely it is that we're going to see asset prices continue to rise. The only real risk factor that I see from my, my perspective is that when we do start to see tapering from bond purchases on the side of the Federal Reserve or perhaps even the RBA, I think that's when we're going to have to pay a little bit more attention to what these indicators are saying. At this stage, it's that most of them are either right on, just below or already above the same levels and values that they held back during the dot-com era of 2000. So at this stage, ultra-loose monetary policy is giving a lot of momentum to markets, but it's also giving a lot of confidence to investors. Now, that's all I've got for this video right now, but there will be more later today. So please feel free to get in contact with me via any of my social media channels if you do have some questions on today's video. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe to this video so you can get more great content from me and ACY Securities in the future. Have a great trading day ahead.